All right, so we've got all of our two pieces cut, bent, labeled, and now we're ready to start our cutting, our tube notching, our coping is what some will call it. Um, your blueprint, if you're using Bentec, it will print out these wrappers that are made to scale, and I'm gonna show you how to cut them out and wrap them around your tube and what this lineup with outside radius and all that stuff means. It'll give you the cut angle, the cut size, the rotation. Now the rotation, it only would work if you were to mark your tube before you started bending and rotating, like my upper mainframe and the others that had a rotation in it. If we were to mark where up and down was on our tube, then when we put it on our tube notcher, we would be able to rotate it whatever angle it's telling us to rotate from zero, and then we could make our, our cut on the tube notcher. We didn't do that, but it's still fairly easy to line this up. Once we get this wrapper wrapped around the end of the tube, we're gonna trace that edge on the tube, and that's gonna be our guide and we're gonna set the cut angle at whatever angle it's telling us to. And it's actually pretty easy to line up with that that way. One thing I suggest you doing is labeling each one of these cutting wrappers. It says on this paper, left upper mainframe, but it does not say that on this cutting wrapper. And once you get all these cut out, and there can be a lot of them, you're gonna forget which one's which. So. I would label it left upper main frame and then the cut side would be the start end and that would be the end you put your star on. If it says cut side end, that's obviously the end without the star on it. All right, so I'm gonna get this cut out and we'll go through how to wrap it around the tube and trace it. Do your best to cut right up against the line on this. The better you make your cuts on this cut wrapper, the cleaner the line will be to follow when you're trying to cut and not sure your tubing. All right, now we've got it cut. We can throw that page away now because we've got everything labeled here. And we're gonna go find the left upper main frame, which is this guy. I like to use clear scotch tape, just seems a little bit easier. So first I'm gonna line it up, not really worry about where it's placed right now. I just need to get it taped together and then I'll slide it around to the right position. Try to pull that as nice and tight as you can. All right. Now, when it says line up with outside radius, that's talking about this line here. All right. That line, we're gonna line up with the outside radius of the closest bend to it. So this little tiny bend here, we're gonna line up that outside radius with this line. Now, it also says, two and one sixteenth to the end. That is from this line here in the middle to that end of the tube. So it's two and one sixteenth yeah, right there. What I'm gonna do is run this out for reference. Then I'm going to make and trace this line here. That way, if anything gets bumped or slid, I can still line it up without having to measure it. Now just take and trace this wrapper as best you can. Nice, good, bold lines. All right, now we've got that, this end marked and traced. Just slide that out of the way so we can see it. Now we can see where to line this up on our tube notcher. Now this is where my head tube comes in. So it looks like we've got to notch in two different directions to get this angle in there to fit my, my head tube and the other main frame. Now, some of these, like I mentioned before, won't be doable in your tube notcher, whatever you might have and you'll have to cut these by hand with a cutoff wheel, which really isn't that bad. It's not that big a deal. Once you get them cut roughly close, then you can come in with a, a grinder and clean the edges up and get them even closer. But keep track of your wrappers just in case you need to retrace it or change it. I'm gonna get the rest of these 
all marked up, and then we will go over the, the notching once I'm finished with that. All right, when we are lining up our cut wrappers on just your straight tubes, your cross members and things, what I like to do is line this line up with the seam weld of the tubing. It helps keep things nice and straight. Now, unlike when we have a radius or anything, um, it will tell you to measure from the end to this center line here, but when it's on straight tubes, it'll say 13 and 9 16 distance to the second line. So it would be that distance is from this line to this line on this wrapper and 15 and 1 8 to the end. So that is from this line to the end of the tube. That's why it's real important that you're cutting all of your pieces as exact to size as you can, because that's the way all these wrappers were generated was for exact size. So we're just gonna go 15 and 1 8 to the end. And I'm gonna put my tube up against that and I will slide this guy, not sure if you can see it in the video, to 15 and 1 8. And on this cutting wrapper, 15 and 1 8 the same, put it up against there. And I will pull this over to 1 8, 15 and 1 8. Just double check that these are on the same side of that weld seam. So they're lined up. And then just to be sure, we're gonna double check the 13 and 9 16 distance from there to there. And it's, yep, 13 and 9 16. And that's how you would line up your cutting wrappers for the straight tubes. This is our tube notcher. This thing is amazing when we've got it in conjunction with our Bentec software. Even if we aren't using the blueprints, we can still get pretty precise and dialed in with this thing. It makes welding round tube to round tube that much easier. I'm gonna show you two of these. One is just a simple straight through cut uh, with I think just one degree of an angle. And then this one actually has two cuts on both sides to do. And I thought that would be a good one to show you. Um, the first one is just at one degrees this way. And then the next one, well, you'd have to rotate and do just uh, seven degrees, but only cut through half of this and not all the way through. Now, first, let's talk a little bit about safety with this this machine, you see a lot of these little shark bite pieces come out of this. When we're operating this tool, you'll see these kind of fly around in these metal chips. They can be really, really hot. So any open toed shoes or even just tennis shoes, I've had kids have these pieces melt through and stick to their skin. Or if they've got parts of their ankles showing, it'll just, these are like little magnets for bare skin. Um, usually we have some WD-40 that we'll spray on our hole saw bit to help cool things down. I don't have any and I didn't want it for the video anyway. So on this machine, when we are setting it up, I would like you to back this guy away just in case someone does turn that switch on. I don't want your hands anywhere near this hole saw bit. Now, with this, I'm gonna take and slide these wrappers off. All right, now that I've got the, the cutting wrappers off, I'm gonna set it up in this jaw. Now, when we go to set this thing up, we can't really do too short of a piece of tubing in here because this needs to be able to hold it tight enough while it's being cut by this hole saw bit. Now, the problem is that like on this piece in particular, I it's short enough that I may not be able to get it clamped in both sides, especially for the second side when I switch it over. So you need to make sure you get, if you can only clamp on one side of this tube, make sure it's in there tight enough. If not, it'll get pulled and, and it'll jump once this blade catches it. And it can either damage the hole saw blade or it can deform and ruin your tube and you'll have to cut a new one. We've got our chuck key here for this 
to tighten the vise. Now, what I'm gonna do is just get this close. Now, what I like to do on my straight tube pieces, I always put this weld seam on top. That way, when I flip it over to cut the other side, all I've gotta do is just line up that weld seam again, and I know that it's clocked correctly. If you cut this side and then you flip it over and you don't get it clocked the right way, instead of having your cross member hit your frame nice and square and flat, on this side, you could have it crooked and it's not gonna line up on that flat piece. That's why it's important to make sure you line them up nice and straight. So this one is just a straight through at one degree. So to change the degree angles on this, it doesn't have one through five, it just goes in five degree increments. We're going to loosen this and try to just get it somewhere where it looks like it would be the one. Now with that loose, we can bring this whole jaw assembly closer. That way I might be able to still clamp on one side. But you need to be aware that this has to go all the way through. And if you're too close to this, like you can see right here, some kids have ran this whole saw bit into the jaw. So we'll always be aware of the path that this is gonna be going.